a wonderful person, this is Anton, and approximately a year ago from when I'm making this video, I promised you a space explosion, and specifically a nova that was supposed to happen before September of 2024, that unfortunately still has not happened, even though this is already March of 2025. And naturally quite a lot of people were not happy with this because we all wanted to see an explosion. Even though obviously it would not be that spectacular, just seeing this new star in a night sky for at least a few months would be kind of super cool. Well, guess what? Even though that nova still has not happened, we now actually have a very high chance for an actual supernova in the nearby galaxy of Large Magellanic Cloud. And if that supernova happens, it might be even more spectacular and obviously one of those once-in-a-lifetime events we might not witness for quite some time. And so let's discuss this event and why scientists are super excited about it. But I guess first, let's start with the star. Because technically we've discussed this many years ago, as this star used to be one of the largest, if not the largest, stars in the entire universe. A star you see right here, and this is the actual picture, taken with the very large telescope and being the first image of any star outside of the Milky Way. And the name of the star is WOH G64, or I guess WOH G64. And in this case, WOH is just three names of three different people that co-discovered the star back in the 70s. It was actually discovered by Professor Westerlund, Olander, and Haddon. And as I mentioned, this is a star in the Large Magellanic Cloud, the largest neighboring dwarf galaxy that's technically known for at least one other supernova that happened back in 1987. And technically, this supernova basically served as a kind of a catalyst for the explosion of interest in astronomy for the next few decades. This was also the first time we've discovered neutrinos coming from an object that was not the Sun from somewhere else in the universe. And while today this remnant is pretty well known, but it's the remnant in a location where there are a lot of massive stars and quite a lot of stars that will eventually go supernova. And so discovering another potential candidate is not actually that surprising. But there is actually something really surprising about this star. And so as I mentioned, it used to be the largest star we've ever seen. It was approximately 1500 solar radii in diameter, with the main component being what's known as the Red Supergiant. As a matter of fact, I believe we've discussed this star back in the days when I just started making videos, because it was indeed one of the largest, if not the largest stars known to us back then. Even though it was kind of similar to Betelgeuse and very similar red giants, it was just much, much larger. Here in this picture, the sun is just a tiny pixel. So actually, you're probably not going to be able to even see it. And even today, a lot of pages, including pages on Wikipedia, still list it as a huge red supergiant. Which is technically not incorrect because this is normally what we expect of stars. As in, we don't expect stars to change too much in mere decades. And once we establish a size of a star, it's extremely likely going to remain similar for thousands, if not millions, or maybe even billions of years. And this is basically where the star kind of shocked everyone. Even though we don't expect stars to change much in a period of just a few years, this bizarre star did. Because first of all, it's no longer considered to be a red supergiant. It's now considered to be something else. And this is really bizarre. So here's actually an illustration from 2007 of what the star was potentially like. So essentially, this image shows us a red supergiant surrounded by a very thick torus of dust that seems to be approximately one light year in diameter. And there's actually a lot of material in this torus, representing up to nine solar masses of gas expelled over time. And that's because it was discovered that this star is also the fastest in terms of mass loss. Here it was discovered that this star seems to lose three to five solar masses every 10,000 years. And that's actually quite a lot. And not just a lot, it seems to be very unusual for a typical red supergiant. And as a result, this led to an extremely rapid evolution of this star, with these observations from 2007 now actually being super outdated. Because now it seems to be not a red supergiant, but what the scientists refer to as a yellow hypergiant, that's dramatically smaller in size from previous observations. It used to be 1500 radii of the sun, now it's only 800. And so in other words, since 2014 up until 2025, in just 10 years, it seems to have dramatically shrunk, transforming in a way we have never seen before, and basically becoming a completely new star that actually shocked the scientists behind the recent study. And as always, you can find this in the description, but here the European team, with the main researcher Gonzalo Munoz Sanchez, basically could not believe their eyes. Or I guess technically, could not believe their telescopes. 
because here at first they thought they were looking at the wrong star since the properties were entirely different. Not only was the star half the size, it also dramatically dimmed in brightness, especially with the red light, only producing approximately 1% of luminosity compared to previous observations, while at the same time dramatically changing its temperature as well. It used to be approximately 3200 Kelvin and used to have a lot of red color and even signatures of titanium oxide, which is apparently very common in these red supergiants, but now it was approximately 4700 Kelvin and the emissions line were producing iron and nickel, but also a lot more blue color. So it was literally like looking at a completely different star, which is exactly what they thought at first. Yet it wasn't, it was the same star. And that's on top of a lot of other observations, including somewhat unpredictable variability. It seems to increase and decrease in brightness without any particular pattern, with luminosities changing in a way we've never seen before. Which is I guess kind of similar to what happened to Betelgeuse a few years back. And so here the combination of these dramatic changes and very unpredictable changes in brightness imply that the star is definitely going through some dramatic changes super quick. And though obviously we have no idea what happened here, mostly because the observations between 2007, 2014 and now have been kind of sparse, whatever happened and whatever is happening seems to be kind of extreme. And not just extreme, it's never been seen before. Even the changes around Betelgeuse were not nearly as extreme as what we're seeing here. So basically, in a nutshell, it went from being a super active red supergiant into a very quiet, very mellow yellow hypergiant in what seems to be just maybe 5 years, with the most likely date of transformation being 2014. And as you can imagine for astronomers, this is actually super exciting. As a matter of fact, this is the closest we've been to potentially observing a nearby supernova because at the moment this is the best explanation. The extremely rapid transformation we're seeing could be just the signs of instability right before the star explodes. And if so, it might actually explode relatively soon. Not like 100 years soon, for all we know it could happen in the next few years. But there's always a but. So yeah, I don't want to raise your hopes too much. There are still additional explanations to what's happening, and these explanations do not involve a potential supernova. So first of all, scientists believe that this is actually a binary, and the presence of a second star, which has been hinted in a lot of observations of the light signature, might be responsible for these dramatic changes, especially the changes around the star itself. And specifically, one of the explanations here is that maybe this was actually the yellow hypergiant all along. But it was just actually being hidden by a lot of extra layers around it, which stayed here for a very long time, making the star appear much brighter, and also making it appear as one of the largest stars in the entire universe. But as the star became more active and potentially blown all these extra layers away, or as the partner orbiting the star eventually stripped all of these layers away from the star, the actual yellow hypergiant was finally revealed. And well, if that's the case, what we basically just observed is a transformation of a star that does not necessarily mean a supernova, but does once again suggest that sometimes a lot of these stars become extremely active and release a lot of material that basically covers the entire star system in a lot of this extra dust. Which is, I guess, in some sense, a somewhat similar explanation to what happened to Betelgeuse a few years back, except that in the case of Betelgeuse, it was a much smaller dust cloud, and it made Betelgeuse dimmer. Here, it's quite possible that this was just something way more dramatic and involved way more dust. But that's just an alternative explanation, because right now the supernova explanation is still technically the best. In other words, right now the assumption is that this was a red supergiant that suddenly became a yellow hypergiant because it's going through some dramatic changes before the explosion. Which means that the next step is to basically determine what evolutionary stage the star is in and how likely is it to explode anytime soon. And while well, because of these discoveries, this is most likely going to be the most studied star for the next few years. I'm sure nobody wants to miss an actual supernova happening in real time. And so we're probably going to be hearing more about the star which will hopefully also get some kind of a super cool name. And that's because right now none of these names are easy to pronounce. Wach G64 just sounds like some kind of an insult out of Star Trek. But basically until future discoveries and future observations, that's right now all we know. This is actually one of the most exciting discoveries in the last few months, especially when it comes to stellar evolution, and a discovery that was basically made completely by accident. Nobody expected the star to go through so many changes in just a few years, and most importantly, Nobody has any idea what's going on. And so once there are some updates and once we find out something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves new space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, 
Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.